This video is brought to you by fishhuntshoot.com. For more and bigger trout, go to fishhuntshoot.com. Howdy guys, Kel Kellogg here. It is time to talk river salmon fishing and I am gonna talk about salmon fishing in the Sacramento Valley and uh, kind of the Bay Area too. Um, is it gonna be a great salmon run this year? It may well be pretty good, especially later in the season, but right now the water is warm and that doesn't mean there's not opportunities to catch salmon. What that means is once the fish hit the river system, they are shooting right upstream. They're going right up above Red Bluff where the water is at its coolest and consequently, that's where the best fishing has been. But let's finish up with that, with that upper end fishing. Let's start out right down there in the Bay Area. Let's start out along the Benicia shoreline. Now, that fishing had been very slow and you know, it, it's seldom a barn burner down there. You can't count on going down there and fishing off the shore and catching a salmon, but we are seeing the scores inching up. If you wanna get in on that, it's a great low cost way to catch a salmon. When the fish are down at Benicia, they're still high quality. They haven't, well, they haven't really left the salt water yet. They're making that final turn into the Delta. They're in the Carquina Straits and uh, you know, they've just come out of the ocean. Um, you want to stand on the shoreline, throw that MEPS flying C, get it down along the bottom, slow roll it in. That is a fun day. A lot of camaraderie down there. A lot of other guys will be fishing. A lot of guys will have big giant nets and uh, it is the fish of a thousand casts. But if you go down there and put in your time, say from, from here to the next month or so, you have a really good shot at catching a 15, 20, 25, 30 pound salmon off the bank. All you need is a spinning rod, spool it up with some braid, throw a MEPS flying C, you can go with the pink one, orange one, chartreuse one, whatever tickles your fancy. I don't know that color's that important. Um, what is important is keeping it down along the bottom and being persistent. So that's a great option if you're in the Bay Area. Now, if you're a guy with a boat out in the Delta, Man, the salmon are moving through the delta fast. They are shooting right up to system. But are fish being caught? Absolutely fish are being caught, you know? Particularly in that run from Clarksburg to, to Freeport. Um, you wanna go out there, you wanna troll the, the Silvertrons, the, the uh, VZs, the, the, the MEP spinners. Again, keep them along the bottom. Don't be afraid to mix in a wrapped flatfish along with your spread, but uh, keep your gear along the bottom. Persistence pays off. There are fish out there. The fish that are in Redding and Red Bluff, they have to pass through the Delta, so they're out there. Your challenge is to put that lure right in front of one when they are focused on you know not holding, but rather pushing right up the system. Um, there are good numbers of stripers being caught right now by trollers, so a good strategy if you're gonna take your boat out there to the West Delta, the Central Delta, might be to spend three or four hours you know, grinding for the salmon, see if you're successful, and then work the tides, the tide changes for the stripers. That might be a very viable way to go. Um, when the flows ramp up, up river, it's typically when you have the best action in the delta and up river too. But when you, you got watch those river flows closely, when you, when you see a surge of water coming down the system, that is the time to get out there. That is the very best time to hook a fish. They're not getting a fish per boat in the delta, but they are catching fish, and some of the fish are very big, 28 pounds, 31 pounds, those are just a couple of the fish I've heard about. So it's definitely worth your time to get out there, mix it up, catch some stripers, and maybe find yourself hooked up to a big old salmon. Now moving upriver, um, let's hit the feather and the American really fast. Um, just keeping it short, they're, they're, it's really slow. Neither river has much flow, a lot of stagnant water, um, the fishing is very hit and miss in the feather. Very few guys are catching fish. There's no guides out there. Um, the, the outlet, the famous outlet, there's not much going on at the outlet. There's not much water at the outlet. And as a consequence, no water, no salmon, no fun, no happy anglers. So there you go. That's the story on the feather and largely the story, you know, on the American mouthy, the American and all that. 
Now moving up the Sacramento, we get up above say from Calusa to Woodson Bridge, Chico area. Now we start to see the scores ramp up. You know, guys are starting out the day out there pulling flatfish. Um, once the sun is on the water, a lot of guys are switching over to row. But uh, boats are averaging two to three fish a day fishing that section of the river. Um, and some of those fish, again, are big. 30 pound fish, 25 pound fish. There are some very big fish in the system. And we're gonna see more big fish as the season progresses. But we're into September now. We're starting to get into the sweet part of the season. You know, I always figure anywhere from September 1st through Halloween, the end of October, that's the time that you're gonna encounter the most fish. When you get past Halloween, you're really hunting for the big fish. Not to say you can't get a limit late in the season, but that's when you wanna get out there if you're looking to hook a 40 or 50 pounder. But right now, we are in the sweet spot of the season, so if you wanna fish out of Woodson or somewhere like that, start off with plugs, finish up with row, you know, you wanna make every strike count. You wanna to try to land every fish that strikes because you're not gonna get a plethora of strikes. But if you got your A game on, you're probably gonna get out of there with two or three fish. Um, and if you go up above that, so you go up above Red Bluff, the action's even better. That's not a surprise. That's where the salmon are starting to keg up. That's where they're going. The more salmon in the river, the better chance you have of hooking up. And we're starting to see an average of, you know, three to five fish per boat. We're seeing limits up there. The pattern is the same, you know, start out with the flatfish and then switch over to row. Of course, we got the specialists out there. We got the guys like Mike Bo. They spend most of their time fishing the flatfish. And we got, you know, the opposite end of the spectrum. We got guys up there like Kevin Brock. He spends a lot of time working with row. But uh, probably for the average guy, the best strategy is to start out with the plugs and then switch to the row. And uh, if you don't know about navigating that section of river, the, the, the really good strategy for you is to break out the wallet, book a trip with Kevin Brock, Mike Bogue, somebody like that, somebody that's been at it for a long time, those guys are going to put you on the fish. You're going to get your shots. You're going to get your chances. If you've never done it before, ask for a tutorial and do exactly what those guys tell you to do. I will tell you, even, even when, a, when a salmon comes up and hits a big T-55 flatfish, it takes a little bit of finesse to hook those fish. Um, you, you gotta let them have it. I've been out there with experienced anglers that miss strike after strike simply because they were setting the hook too fast. You gotta work that sinker down as you're back trolling and when you get a salmon mauling that, mauling that plug, you gotta let them have it. Fish and row, that's a little more simple. You're gonna get a kind of a traditional bite, set the hook, fish on, yeehaw, we're having a good time. But uh, a lot of the really big fish come early, they come on the plugs, and man, it just, it's like a, it's like a gut punch if you miss one of those plug bites. So, if you haven't done it, ask for that tutorial and follow those instructions to the letter. Um, there you have it. We have some very good salmon fishing opportunities. It's not 1960, it's not 1970, it's not even 1980. We don't have that volume of fish. We have very poor water conditions this year, but if it is your ambition to hook a big old king salmon in the Sacramento system this fall, you put in your time and you are going to be rewarded. The question is, how big will the fish be? Is it gonna be a 15 pounder, a 30, a 40? Maybe you wanna fish late. Maybe you'll get lucky. Maybe you'll get that 50. But you're not gonna get any salmon if you don't go, you know, you don't catch a lot of salmon off the couch. So again, if it's your ambition to catch a salmon, get out there on the water, um, put in some time, and if you're not really confident of your skills, book a trip with a guide and that will really skew the, the teeter-totter in, in your direction in terms of salmon fishing success. I'm out of here for now. I will be back with a lot more salmon fishing information down the road. I've been getting tons of requests for salmon fishing tutorials, you know, salmon fishing reports, stuff like that. I haven't been river salmon fishing yet this year. I'm a pretty good river salmon fisherman for a guy that doesn't 
do a whole lot of it, but I'll get out there a couple times this year. I always do. I like to go late in the season. I am always hoping to get a really big fish. I've, I've caught two 40 pound river kings in my lifetime. And uh, man, I I've got my heart set on catching a 50 and maybe this is, is, the, is the year. We will see. I, when I think about a 50, I, I can't even talk. I get so I get so steamed up. Anyway, I'm Cal Kellogg. I'm out of here for now. If you're looking for gear, remember, fish hunt, shoot. That's the place to go. We've got high quality gear at very fair prices. I want to thank you guys for all the support. And please hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that already. And you'll always know when I'm on here talking fishing. You guys have a great day. I'm Cal Kellogg.